So I want to remind everyone again that we will be having our Bible study uh, this, this Wednesday, September 30th at 7 o'clock on Zoom. And we'll be studying our the Old Testament lesson from today, Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. And as always, we'll use the same meeting ID and password that we use here for worship. So we hope that you will enjoy, you'll join us for a very enlightening evening. Um, it is with much regret and sadness that I do inform you that our trunk or tree has been canceled for this year due to the COVID-19 precautions. However, the hospitality team and the uh, outreach committee is already planning next year's events, as well as some new exciting possibilities. The state in the well, parking lot. So we'll have to wait and see what they come up with, but it sounds like they're really working on some pretty neat things. I want to remind everybody that our court grocery cards at Giant and Weiss Cards are still up for are still for sale for those of you who would like to uh, who use the, the grocery cards for your uh, grocery shopping convenience. Uh, we'll just call in, put place your order, and we'll make sure the cards get out to you in whatever denomination you want. Also, if you know somebody out in the community or you yourself need to talk to somebody, we'd just like to have a, a phone call um, to just to hear someone else's voice uh, and. You know, or you need some help around the house, or you need groceries gotten for you, please give the church a call. We are more than help, more than welcome to help you out. We have a wonderful visitation team, and we have a wonderful uh, ICC committee that helps out uh, as well with all of the needs of the people. So we're certainly going to be there for anyone who needs it. And finally, as I say each and every week, please, 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 please make sure that you do all the safety precautions of sneezing into your elbow or coughing in your elbow, wearing a mask, staying apart, social distancing, so that we can get back to somewhat of a new normal uh, as we wait for a vaccine to come out. But we wanna make sure that we demonstrate and we practice what we preach. We wear a mask because we love our neighbor. We do it for those around us to make sure that we don't uh, infect anyone and then it also gives us some protection as well. So please, Live those, live those words of Christ to love your neighbor and also do this to make us keep us all healthy and safe. And now please join with the choral call to worship that's going to be found on the walls as well as on your screens. Thou art worthy. <laughs>
Please join me in the opening prayer found on the walls and on your screen. We marvel, O oh God, at the thought that you care about us. We are amazed that the Creator of the universe would take on human flesh to draw near to us in ways we would begin to understand. As Jesus emptied himself to serve, modeling your love even in the face of death, we seek in those moments to lay aside self-interest that we might take direction from you. Help us to humble ourselves in order to obey you, to listen in order to hear, to care in the order of service. Lead us, day. Sorry. Lead us day and night through the dangers of the wilderness of our time. Lead us in those moments in honor and fervor of worship. Amen. Like the chief priests and scribes of Jesus' day, we are tempted to confuse our ways for God's ways. We trust our own authority and defend the way we live as if we've earned all that we claim as our own. We see the sins of others more readily than we see our own. Our church sometimes reflects our priorities more than the mind of Christ. We need to pray. So let us confess our sins by reciting the prayer of confession found on the walls and on your screen. We fear to approach you with our confession, holy God, for you may require changes in us that are costly. You ask us to have the mind of Christ, a mind free of pretense and self-interest. You challenge us to lay aside our advantages, to go where you send us. We fear loss of security if we are obedient. It is hard to see ourselves as exploiters when we pursue advantages for our families. It is difficult to consider others when we feel like victims. We confess our need for you and our desire to find purpose for us. Amen. Let us confess our personal sins in silence. Lord, hear our prayers. God accepts us in the midst of our struggles. There is encouragement in Christ. There is consolation from love. There is compassion, sympathy, and opportunity to share in the spirit. God blesses us as we gather in community, calling us to find our common mind in Christ Jesus. May we not only agree to do the work God places before us as a ministry of love, but let us do all we can to share our faith with a faithfulness stripped of pretense and conceit. May our lives praise God. So kids gather around the, the computer screens and I've got a couple of questions for you this morning. So I want you to think about it when, when you're outside playing in the hot, hot sun of the day. And what do you do when you start getting thirsty? Well, you probably go inside, right? And get a drink of water so you can cool off and satisfy your thirst. But what if mom says, no, no, you got to wait. You got to wait a little while. Can't have for at least a half hour. How would you feel? She made you wait when you're really, really thirsty. What might you say to her? Would you be frustrated and complain that you're really thirsty and I just can't wait? Or would you say, oh, okay, I'll wait. Well, in a Old Testament lesson today, 
we're going to learn about when the Israelites were wandering in the desert, they got really thirsty. And God had promised to protect them. And if, as, if they did what was right and followed God's instructions. But they got kind of impatient, kind of like we do. And they didn't want to wait for their water. They wanted it now because they were thirsty. So they complained to their leader, Moses, and they prayed, and, and he prayed to God about what to do. So God instructed Moses to take his staff, like a walking stick, and to go to a special place and hit a special rock. So Moses did exactly what God told him to do, and water gushed forth out of the rock and, and saved the Israelites from thirst in the, in the desert. Then he named the, the place Massa and Meribah, which means uh, to murmur against or complain and to quarrel with the Lord. And even though the Israelites complained and quarreled with the Lord, according to Moses, God still provided for them in their time of need. And that's something that we need to remember when things aren't necessarily going our way. In fact, that's my challenge for you today. I want you to turn to God when things aren't working out quite the way you want them to. That way, the Holy Spirit can guide you and provide you the things you really need, not necessarily what everything that you want. Then, if you look and listen closely, you will see and hear the Holy Spirit guiding and providing for you all the days of your life. So you think you can do that? I bet you can. Let's pray. God of our lives, help us to hear your guiding words and see your wondrous works so that we know you are with us all the days of our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our oath lesson, Old Testament lesson for this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. The Israelites are moving forward in their difficult journey to the promised land. We hear Moses call to them and to us to recognize God's provision and come back to faithful, obedient living, beginning in verse 1. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horbeth. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? Here ends our first reading. Our gospel lesson is from the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 23 through 32. Jesus' parable about the sons who did or did not fulfill the master's request surprises listeners with questions about the agreement of words and actions and the reversal of expectations, beginning in verse 23. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. 
If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we're afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will, I will not. But later he changed his mind and he went. Then the father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I will go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe in him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your mind and believe him. Blessed are those who hear the word of our God and believe. Let us pray. On the present God, you abide with us all the days of our lives. You guide us, nurture us, and provide for our very needs. May we show our appreciation for the magnificent gifts we receive by doing your work in this world as we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth might be pleasing and acceptable to you this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This part of the Exodus, there this part of Exodus is called the complaint narratives. And they revolve around the fear and faithlessness of the Israelites, as well as their complaining against Moses' leadership and the Lord's deliverance. Now you would think that if there was there were there, that each, excuse me you would think that if you just gained your freedom from slavery you would be a little more appreciative and maybe even a little happy but that's not the case here numerous times we'll hear that the Israelites say that it would be better off if they would stay in Egypt which of course meant that they would have to continue their lives in slavery and even though this they they complain and quarrel. God still provides for them. If there was ever a case where a wrathful God would have been appropriate, it seems that the complaint narratives would have been the perfect place. In Exodus, we see the people panic when they see the Egyptians pursuing them. They bitterly ask Moses if they brought them out of Egypt just so they could die in the wilderness. They complain to Moses about the water at Merah uh, is bitter. And then they complain because of a lack of food. And today's great session follows directly on the miraculous provision of bread from heaven known as manna. But again and again, we don't see a wrathful God, but rather a faithful, tolerant, and compassionate God that provides for their very needs in life. And, in, and according to the events in Exodus 15 and 16, just prior to our lesson today, the Israelites have only been in the wilderness for about two and a half months at this point. And already they are at the point of stoning Moses. And even though stoning is a part of the judicial system of Israel, Moses is worried that this will be mob violence, not authorized capital punishment. So as the story goes, Moses cries out to God. And once again, God delivers. Moses is to take the elders of Israel with him to the specific place in the wilderness called Sin, which comes from what we call Sinai, as in, the Mount, as in Mount Sinai, where Moses gets the Ten Commandments, also known as Mount Horeb, where the rock, where the rock is that Moses strikes. Moses is to take his staff and strike the rock. This is the same staff that made the bitter water at Marah drinkable. There, Moses and the elders witnessed God's miraculous provision of water for the thirsty Israelites. An interesting side note here is that the whole congregation of Israel are those who were in the Exodus, and, they, and where they stopped, they had no water. Now, normally, you would not stop 
where there was no water. So most likely, this was an unplanned stop due to exhaustion of the whole congregation of Israel as they travel in stages. So how does this story teach us to be faithful and trusting in God? Well, look at what happens in the Exodus. The Israelites are saved from the angel of death at the Passover, convincing Pharaoh to free them from slavery. They are then delivered from the hands of the Egyptian army at the Red Sea or the Sea of Reeds. Then they are given bread from heaven called manna when they are hungry. And now they're given water abundantly when they are thirsty. We see it over and over and over again that God is not only with the Israelites throughout their travels, but God provides for them, even when they're maybe a little less than appreciative. And this is fantastic news for us because humanity has not always been very appreciative of all that God provides for us. In fact, we often take for granted the wonderful gifts that we have already received such as life, creation, love, family, spiritual gifts, the Holy Spirit, and the teachings of Christ. We have been given amazing gifts from God that rarely we really, really appreciate. The Exodus story is about us, humanity, God's creation, God's children, and all God asks of the Israelites and of us is to love God with all of our hearts, our minds, our soul, and our strength. That simply means putting God first in our lives. And we do that when we heed God's word and will on earth, when we love our neighbor, when we strive for shalom or harmony rather than strife. In other words, we treat one another in the same way we want to be treated. And if we're going to call ourselves disciples, then we need to study, we need to learn, and then we need to put into practice those teachings. We need to be committed, faithful, and determined. We don't give up when it's no longer convenient. We count on God to be there through the thick and thin of life. We rely on God to guide us, nurture us, and provide for us rather than our own feeble human abilities. Simply put, we need to trust, truly trust in God. You see, too often when things get rough, we complain, we blame God or someone else, and then we simply just give up because Christianity is no longer attractive or useful, and discipleship is definitely way too hard. But for those who truly love their God, try their hardest and keep on going when it, when it gets tough because they know God is there with them, guiding them, tolerating their doubts and their fears while loving them regardless of their success or their failure. It's hard to realize God is with you if you don't really have any respect for God. But when you believe, it's a lot easier to trust in a God that forgives you. It makes it easier to finish what you started, kind of like the story. The stadium was nearly empty. More than an hour earlier, the winner of the marathon in the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico City had crossed the finish line. As the last spectator prepared to leave, John Stephen Aquari of Tanzania hobbled into the stadium. His leg was bandaged and bloody. A fall during the race had deeply cut and dislocated his knee. Through the obvious pain, he pressed on to become the last of 57 competitors to finish the race, a race that had begun with 74. When asked by a reporter, why don't you just simply give up? Akwari paused as if mystified by the question. Then he replied, my country did not send me 5,000 miles to Mexico City to start the race. They sent me 5,000 miles to finish the race. Mr. Akwari didn't complain about his plight. He didn't blame God for his misfortune, but he used the determination as commitment to finish what he started. As disciples of Christ, 
May we have that same determination and commitment to finish what we started with the help of God's Holy Spirit. That being a love for our God, a commitment to Christ's teachings, and a will to do God's work in this world. Amen. Let us continue our service with our hymn of response. Fill my cup, Lord, on the walls and on your streets. <laughs> This is a time of our service. I want to remind you to take notes of the people mentioned in our joys and concerns and join your list today with the one from last week and place it on your refrigerator, on your nightstand, or on your coffee table, anywhere that will remind you to share God's love with others through your prayers. This is a vital ministry here at Trinity and one that has had some amazing results. Today, I'd like to start with Joy Purcell's cousin. As you know, Joy had moved down south with her daughter and her cousin, Susan, Spadesco, who broke both her ankles and are, is currently at a local nursing home recuperating. Prayers for healing, comfort, and peace for Susan and her family. Yesterday, we laid Joe Johnson Jr.'s cremains to rest at the New Rosemont Cemetery. Joe was Beverly Johnson's husband who passed away in Florida back in July. Please keep Beverly and Joe's family in your prayers for peace and comfort. And finally, as a joy, it was a joy to see everybody once again at the fall festival as people drove by and came to pick up their food and we were able to say hi and see so many people we have not seen in months. So what a wonderful festival we had, what a wonderful time it was to see everybody and see everybody coming together once again to take care of our community and to fellowship with one another. What a wonderful time. And as always, I remind you to send in your joys and concerns to us through, through email, text, or by phone, and we will be sure to include them in our next service. So now, let us pray. Loving God, whose messengers have shown us the way of righteousness, and whose revelation in Jesus Christ has demonstrated humble obedience to your will, lead us this day to the joy they have known through serving you. 
that our witness may be as authentic as theirs and be influential in the lives of all we meet, adding to your realm in heaven and on earth. As today we ask mindfully that you watch over and comfort our friends in Christ, such as our homebound, those in life care centers, those on our prayer list, as well as those named here today. And we celebrate with you the saints of this church that serve your people with such love. Now in a moment of silence, we ask that you hear those prayers that are too private to speak out loud. Lord, hear our prayers. May we keep these special people in our minds and in our hearts and in our prayers as we go through this next week. And let us pray the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Grace gave us selfish ambition and conceit for human being like us. May we offer our best for sisters and brothers who need the message we can send and the partial help we can provide through our offering. So let us consider going to the church's website at www.trenanewreformedusdc.org and present your offerings to God online or by sending in your church envelopes as best as you are able. Those who are here in person can drop those offerings in the basket in the rear of the sanctuary. <laughs> Please join me in the blessing and commission found on the walls or on your screens. Go forth to serve in the spirit of Christ. Dare to question false values that hold us captive. We will seek the mind of Christ in all things. We will put aside selfish ambition and conceit. Look to the greatest interests of the people. In humility, view each person as precious to God. We count it a privilege to serve in Christ's name. We are grateful for the serving power of love. Remember always that God is at work in you. With God's help, amazing good can be accomplished. May we do what you have so boldly declared. May we follow the serve and joyous obedience. Amen. Now hear this pastoral benediction. As we go on about our day today and throughout our week until next Sunday, let us consider when we call ourselves Christians or disciples of Christ, are we truly following God's will when we do it? Or are we just giving up when things get tough? Do we truly believe that God and the Holy Spirit reside within us? 
and are there to guide us and nurture us? Or do we just use our own abilities to get through life? You see, that's what it means to be committed, to be dedicated like Mr. Aquari, to truly follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, to truly do God's will on this earth by loving others, by helping people in the community. And in a divided country as we have today, it is so important that we come together, that we come together in love, respect, and honor and decency. It's what's going to get us through this hard days, knowing that God is with us every day of our life, guiding us, nurturing us, protecting us. May we go out into the world with God's love in our hearts and in our hands. Amen. Let us con conclude our service today with our closing hymn, God Dismiss Us With Your Blessing, on the screens, on your screens, and on the walls. Amen.